Hey y'all, so I'm on here really quickly, at least I think it's going to be quick, who knows, because with God it's up in the air, honestly, but I get this question a lot, and that is how to hear God's voice, how to know that God is telling you to do something, how to know it's not you, and it's not the enemy, um, so on and so forth. I mentioned this briefly in my testimony video about when God blessed me with a house, and I'm gonna try to go a little bit more into depth here. Something God taught me is that when a thought presents itself, especially when I'm making a decision, I'm allowed to sit and chew on that thought. I'm allowed to sit and analyze that thought and really break it down into parts and look at what parts of it glorify God, if any, and what parts don't glorify God, if any. The example I was referring to in my testimony video, which I'll link up here for you guys to look at, was specifically about me choosing this opportunity that had presented itself for me to earn more money, even though I knew God had been putting it on my heart that I was moving soon and he didn't want me working a nine to five anymore. I specifically remember laying in bed the day that I had to make this decision. My time had run out and I had I had time to chew on it, but I was still feeling really anxious. I didn't know which way to go, even though deep down I knew. The point is I had to sit and allow God to really break it down for me. He had me take the two options that I was looking at. He had me take each decision and look at it very, very closely. The first one, there's this job that I've been offered, even though I know that I'm not supposed to be working a nine to five, I know what God's told me. He's confirmed it. He's given me prophetic word after prophetic word. He prophesied to me through another individual. It's clear and cut what God's been telling me. And the other option I was facing is putting my faith in God, even though I had no idea what the rest of that was going to look like, even though it felt like I was taking a step on a staircase and the staircase wasn't even fully formed. It wasn't so much about the decision that I was facing. It was more so a test of my faith. It was more so about what I was willing to do for God. He had me look at these decisions, at these options, and try to identify, is there any anxiety behind this? Is there any fear behind this? Is there any lack mindset behind this? Is there any obligation behind this? Is there any compromise behind this? So although I was getting offered a job in which my circumstance up until this point, the worldly circumstance, the circumstance I was facing in the flesh, okay, that was going against what God had been showing me in the spirit, what he had been speaking to me about, that circumstance showed me in the flesh, you need a job, you need these extra finances, you're getting offered more money, why wouldn't you take this? But upon looking at that option, Everything that that option represented went against what God showed me, went against what God told me. If I took this job, I would be staying in the city I was in, and God told me I was moving out of this city. He told me where I was moving. If I took this job, I was going to be working for someone else. I was going to remain in a nine to five position. Yes, I'd be a manager earning more finances, but was I gonna be doing what God had called me to do, which was, work for him. He had me planning a business. He had me planning this ministry that you see in front of you right now. He had me building a website. And so all of these physical circumstances were up against what I was planning and what I was building but hadn't quite yet come to fruition. When I looked at this management position, this opportunity, this choice that I was facing, I realized me taking this job, I wouldn't feel right taking it in the sense that yes, I would have more money, Yes, I could probably get a new car. Yes, I could probably move out of my parents' place, but I would still be in the same predicament, in the same city, with the same people, doing the same old thing, and not allowing God to expand my territory. On top of that, if I took this job, majority of my time would go towards managing someone else's business when God was trying to birth one of my own through me. This job was going to keep me in a position where I was looking to someone else for my finances, when God wanted me to be in charge of my finances. He wanted me to have financial stability and financial independence, which is something I had been praying for for so long. 
all my life I knew that I didn't like the idea of a nine to five, but that's all I was really taught to, to go for. I was taught that in order to get to a higher level, you kind of have to start off with a nine to five. I was taught that in order for you to reach this level of success, you kind of have to start off in this arena and be here for such and such period of time before you can start to see something shake in your own life. I started working a nine to five when I was 18 years old and I stopped working a nine to five when I was 21. And so everyone's journey is different. Everyone's story is different. And a nine to five is not a horrible thing. It's just that not everyone is called to do that. And I know I'm getting a little bit off topic from the main point of this video, but if that's you, if you believe that God is calling you to pursue entrepreneurship, to be your own boss, Follow what he's telling you to do. Obey his instructions. Plan what he's telling you to plan. Build what he's telling you to build, even if your circumstance doesn't look like it's gonna work out for you just yet. But yeah, so upon looking at this opportunity, I realized, oh my gosh, if I take this, what time am I gonna have to work on what God told me to work on? How am I supposed to elevate as an entrepreneur, as someone who's meant to have their own business and have their own income, if I'm constantly under someone else, being told that I can only earn so much. When I was looking at the other choice that I had, which was to put my faith in what God told me and what God showed me and the visions he gave me, the dreams he gave me, the ideas and the business plans that he had me write down, I realized that there was no fear attached to this choice of trusting God. There was apprehension and there's a very, there's a fine line there's a difference between having a little bit of apprehension towards something because it's new, because it's unfamiliar, because God is taking us out of our comfort zone versus fear. Now let me read you the definition of fear, okay? Fear is an unpleasant emotion caused by the belief that someone or something is dangerous, likely to cause pain or a threat, all right? God's promises, what God is telling you to do will never will never have fear attached to it. So when I was comparing these two choices that I was facing, the job offer that I received, that choice that I had to make, there was a fear of not having enough finances if I didn't take it attached to that option. There was a fear that I would be in lack, that I wouldn't have enough if I didn't take that offer. I also had to look at what glorified God if God was telling me, hey, you're going to do this, you're going to move here, I'm going to provide for you in this way, and I choose to stay put, how does he get the glory out of what he was trying to do in my life? Me taking that job, yes, it's an amazing opportunity, but it would not be glorifying him. It would be me acting out of disobedience because he specifically told me what he wanted me to do. Take the time to truly sit with whatever thoughts you're having, with whatever decision you're facing, and ask yourself, how does this make me feel? How does this make me feel regarding what I truly desire to do, regarding how I truly feel on the inside? If you notice that you're feeling obligation towards one of these decisions, you need to really pay attention to that and take that to God because obligation will oftentimes keep us in places that God desires to move us out of, in situations that God desires to free us from. Obligation will keep you in a toxic, abusive, infidelity-filled relationship. Obligation will keep you in a place that you know is not safe for you to be in, but you are literally being held captive honestly by your mind. It's a mind game. The enemy is using your emotions against you when you are dealing with obligation, when you are dealing with feeling like you need to impress these people or you can't let these people down. Your job is not to live according to what other people think of you. Your job is not to live according to what other people think about what you're doing. Your job is not to live to please others and keep them from feeling uncomfortable around you because you're doing what God told you to do. Your job is to obey your heavenly father. Your job is to seek him and to remain at the foot of his throne if you are struggling with clarity, if you need further clarity, if you need further confirmation, if you need more peace. When I was sitting and imagining myself working at this job, there was a part of me, a large part of me, deep down, I really had to sit and just sit in silence and allow the Holy Spirit to reveal my own emotions to me because my mind was foggy. There was a huge part of me that felt 
if I took this opportunity, I would feel so distraught. I would feel so depressed because I would know deep down that it's not where I was supposed to be. I would feel convicted for not obeying God. I would feel trapped in staying there because I said yes, so I kind of have to stay there if I start. I would constantly be thinking about what it could have been like had I obeyed God. And it's not to say that God couldn't have rectified that situation and brought me out of it, but I would have caused delay. I would have had to go through the uncomfortability of saying, hey, I know I said yes and I know I started and I know you don't have anybody else, but now I can't, I gotta quit. It would have been 10 times more uncomfortable than it was the way it did happen. So when you're facing these decisions, when you're dealing with these thoughts and you're not sure which way to go, oftentimes the enemy will use the pressure of obligation, the pressure of time, the pressure of needing to meet a certain quota in order to get where you need to be when God said that he was going to have you skip that step or he was going to have you do this instead. If there is any type of pressure behind that decision and it is causing you anxiety and you can imagine that upon making that decision you would be unhappy and you can feel it and you know that you know that you know that it's not the decision you're meant to make even though you don't quite know how it's going to play out when you make the opposite decision that is something that the enemy is trying to use against you so sit you are allowed to take the time to seek god regarding this decision if anyone or anything is making you feel like you don't have time, like you gotta do this right now, that is not from God, okay? God's instruction, the choice he wants you to make will always come with peace. Although some of God's decisions may come with apprehension, they will never come with that forceful pressure. They will never come with anxiety. They will never come with fear. They will never come with condemnation. I pray that this bless you guys. I pray that this helped someone. I know I get this question so much. I figured I would just make a video. I was going to talk about it on the podcast, but I'll probably just make this into an audio segment and add it to the podcast at a later time. Before I go, I do have a really quick favor to ask you guys. If you haven't already seen my most recent community post, I announced that I applied for a grant that would greatly help me expand this ministry and do the things that God's put on my heart to do for his glory. The winner is chosen by vote and April 25th is the deadline. And I applied super late. I literally applied yesterday because I was kind of apprehensive. I was like, okay, God, I don't know if this is in your will. Every time I've applied for a grant, it has not worked out in my favor, but I have a piece about it. It's simply because it was not God's perfect timing. And we have to be okay with his timing. That, that goes hand in hand with everything I just said. But nonetheless, I would really appreciate your support of this ministry by voting for me using the link in the description box, or it'll also be pinned in the comments. Please be sure that when you are filling out the business name field that you put complete in Christ. And I am located in the great big state of Texas. I'm really grateful for those of you who have already voted. I am so blessed to have such an amazing YouTube family. You guys have no idea. I love you guys so much. And I'm so, so, so grateful for all of the support, all of the seeds that you guys sow everything. I All the comments, the shares, the likes, thank you for everything, honestly. I'm simply a vessel, but it just blows my mind, you know, that God is even using me in this way, and I'm just really grateful. If you have a prayer request or you're interested in booking a mentorship call, you can do so via dianinevs.com or you can find the link in the description box below. Remember that I love you and God loves you so much more. I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Ciao!